Good morning, Ray Pack. I'm Zach Gordon, and welcome back to another edition of KPTV Panther Television. Our first story this week is from Blake Osher. He takes a look at how COVID has affected our student section at games and the changes they have made. The Raypex student section at the high school football games has been well known for being loud and energetic. But with the introduction of COVID into the new school year, many things have had to change. Kirk Hipple, the new Raypex athletic director, tells us everything we need to know when it comes to these games. So we have a dedicated student section specifically for uh, Friday night football games when we have home games. And we have, um, we utilize every other row, and we also have marked by tape areas every six feet for our students um, to stand or sit. But it's not just the administrators that have had to change things up. Julia Dorweiler tells us about the changes regarding the crowd pumper uppers. So we used to do a lot of chants directed at the other team's student section. We would do like the you, we can't hear you chant. We changed that a little, but we're still able to do most of the chants. Julia also comments on the tradition of the RAPEC student section. I hope next year, if things go back to normal or if things change at all, people still have a lot of participation and are encouraged to go to games because I know this year people are like, oh, why should I go type of attitude, which is really sad. But I think if they're able to go, they should. And so I hope that next year they rise to the challenge and are able to continue that legacy that we've had. Senior Lainey Kilpack tells us how COVID has affected her Friday nights and how this virus has affected the morale of the student body. We're all glad we can be there. The fact that people still want to go even though we have to stay far apart and like everyone does a really good job of keeping their masks on and like we know that it's really cool that we get to be there. Congratulations to the Raypec football team on their tremendous year so far. For more information on how to attend one of these games, contact Mrs. Moore in the athletics office. This has been Blake Osher with KPTV, signing off. Thanks, Blake. Thanks for keeping us updated on everything going on at the student section. Hopefully we can get back to normal next year because I know a lot of people are going to want to go back to those games and get that same energy we had last couple years. Next, we are joined with Tyler Long with announcements this week. Feels like we always have a lot going on this year. What do we need to keep an eye out this week, Tyler? Well, Zach, the Trunk or Treat event will be on October 29th at the South Middle School parking lot. It will be a drive through event, so stay in your vehicles at all times. For more info, contact Audrey Huffman. We hope to see you guys there. The varsity football team are having their playoff game this Friday against Lee Summit here at Panther Stadium. Good luck to you guys and have fun. Volleyball is having a district tournament against Lee Summit West at the Raypeck High School on October 28th at 5 p.m. Go out and support the girls' volleyball game. The yearbooks are on sale through November 24th and with a price of $75, so get them while you can. Also seniors, don't forget about your senior ads. The ads are due on October 30th. There are different price ranges to choose from, so pick the best one just for you. If you have any questions or concerns, email stephaniereth at raypec.org. Do you think you will purchase a yearbook this year, Zach? I might get a yearbook this year, Tyler. I had a really good school picture, so I might want to look at that a couple more times in a bigger book. Anyway, thanks for the update, Tyler. It's going to be very important to keep an update, keep updated on all the opportunities or events so you don't miss anything. Next up, we have Zach Anderson giving us an inside scoop on everything going on with Special Olympics this year. With sports finally up and rolling again, Coach Kara Hornbeck tells us more about how much Special Olympics means to her. Uh, I love uh, everything about it. It's um, Probably the most rewarding thing as a coach is seeing the success of the athletes and seeing them have fun, because that's what it's all about. Hornbeck has been a part of Special Olympics for 11 years since her and Katie Huff volunteered to start a Special Olympics team for our community. We discussed it at the high school, and we had a meeting with the area director, and Katie Howlett and myself uh, said we would coach, and so we started it about 11 years ago. As bowling is slowly coming to a close, Adam Doss, a Special Olympics athlete, expresses his thoughts on the upcoming tournament. Now you get to interact with all, all your friends that you have you learned about. With the new protocol that Special Olympics has to follow 
due to COVID-19, junior Dorico Hilliard tells us more on how the volunteers and athletes can stay safe during this bowling season. Every, after every bowl, we use hand sanitizer. We have to wear masks 24-7. Don't take them off for no reason. And limited touching like high fives. For more information about Special Olympics, contact Coach Kara Hornbeck. This has been Zach Anderson with KPTV Panther Television. Thanks, Zach, for letting us know how the season is going to look. Be sure to look out for all the Special Olympic events and go support our students. Now, with the weather, we have Linnea. She's going to tell us all what's going on this week. It could be all over the place. What's it looking like this week, Linnea? Well, Zach, it's definitely going to be a little bit colder than last week. Most of you saw the snow coming into school this morning. There's going to be a high of 32 and a low of 28. On Tuesday, there will be a high of 38 and a low of 31, another chance for snow. On Wednesday, there will be a high of 46 and a low of 40. It will be partly cloudy. And then on Thursday, it will be a high of 44 and a low of 29. There is a chance of rain. And then on Friday, there's going to be a high of 53 and a low of 35, and it will be sunnier this day. There is a 100% chance of precipitation today and for the next few days, I think. There's going to be an 81% chance of humidity and then 35 miles per hour wind. If you plan on going to any games or activities this week that might be outdoors, I would definitely layer up, wear a hat, gloves. Um, yeah, do you plan on going to any of the games, Zach? I might go check out the games. That cold weather is probably definitely going to keep me inside a little bit more. But the week's looking a little bit better. Hopefully it doesn't jump around too much. I know it was snowing earlier this morning, and it's going to get warmer this week, so that will be a little weird. And thanks for the update, Linnea. Now we're going to go off to our last story. We have Isaiah Floyd telling us what's going on with forensics and debate and how they're dealing with COVID. School has been changing due to the coronavirus, and so has the Raymore Peculiar School District's forensics and debate activities. Most school meets or tournaments have been altered so that the competitors can all compete while being safe. Debate student Braden Schultz tells us all about the changes that have been made to forensics and debates competition. Um, the virtual competitions are different because we um, come to the high school to do events and we're in our own separate rooms when we do the events before and after. Forensics and debate students have been practicing their pieces online and have been able to work in school, but with the coronavirus, it limits the amount of practicing options for the students. With the transition to virtual, students are able to practice in their home and with the help of tools the teachers provide online. Forensics and debate coach Mr. Schnanke telling us all about the challenges for younger students and competitors. Some of our novices uh, have trouble getting a ride to school just because they don't come every day to school. And so, uh, you know, since a lot of them don't drive, it's been challenging at times to figure out, well, how do we get people here? Do we, are we able to get them a ride? Brayton is just one of 40 students that are competing in the Friends and Debate competitions. Brayton tells us all about how he misses the in-person tournaments and how he remembers them. I personally wish they were in person because I like to connect with the judges more and because I don't like to have to wait alone in between like rounds and stuff and waiting on everyone to get there. Make sure you check up on Rampact activities on YouTube and other media sites for more information. This has been Isaiah Floyd, report for KPTV, Panther Television. Thanks Isaiah, thanks for keeping us updated on everything going on with the forensics and debate. We're we'll in our new segment this week. We have movie review with Ashley. She's going to tell us all the new movies or TV shows to keep an eye out for whenever you're at home. we got nothing else to do. What movies do you have for us this week, Ashlyn? A story with vampires, the importance of community, and a hidden message about gentrification in inner cities. Vampires vs. the Bronx offers a, uh, a, a wide range of different issues while also being very funny at the same time. It's rated PG-13, came out on Netflix uh, October the 2nd, and it's about a young teen named Miguel trying to save his favorite place in the community, the bodega, uh, when he later stumbles upon a killing between a vampire and a, va uh, and a man, uh, just to find out that the vampires are a result of the new company that's been buying out all of the small businesses in the Bronx. I highly recommend this movie, I'm basically laughing the entire time. What do you think, Zach? Will you be streaming this movie on Netflix? I think I'll go check out that movie now since you gave me that review. I don't want to be watching a scary movie. I don't know. I try to stay away from those. And since you said it was going to be pretty funny, I'll think I'll take your word on that this time. All right. Thanks for sharing your top takes with us. If anyone happens to have any downtime, be sure to check those out. Thanks for watching. Be sure to come back next time to get updated on everything going on at Raypeg. If, if you want any more information, go check out raypegnow.com to get updated on everything going on. 
I'm Zach Gordon. This has been another edition of KPTV, Panther Television.